In this demonstration, we are going to observe the general reactions of carbohydrates. Here we can see the monosaccharide solutions, glucose and fructose, reducing disaccharide solution, lactose, non-reducing disaccharide solution, sucrose, and the polysaccharide solution, which is starch. So this, we can see it is partially soluble colloidal solution compared with the monosaccharides, which are completely soluble. Here we can see the reagents. First is a molish reagent, which is used for the molish test. The molish test is a test to identify the carbohydrates. Iron solution is used in the iron test. So iron test is used to identify the polysaccharides. Benlix reagent is for the Benlix test. Benlix test is the test to identify the reducing sugar. Bofors reagent is used in the Bofors test. Bofors test is used to differentiate between the monosaccharides and the disaccharides. Selivanov's reagent is used in the Selivanov's test, which is used to differentiate between the aldose and keto sugar. The last one, the phenylhydrazine hydrochloride reagent is used in the ozone test, which is a confirmatory test. First one is a molish test, which is a test for carbohydrates. For this, 1 ml of the sugar solution is taken. To this, 2 drops of molish reagent is added. Then we have to add 2 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid along the sides of the test tube. We have to tilt it slightly so that it will form two layers. Uh, appearance of reddish violet ring indicates the presence of carbohydrates. Iron test is a test to identify polysaccharides. Here we have the fructose and lactose solutions which are monosaccharides and disaccharides respectively and the polysaccharide starch. Here I am doing the iron test in the sugar solution fructose. For the iron test 2 ml of the sugar solution is taken and two drops of iodine reagent added. Iodine is brown in color. Here we can see there is no change in the color of the iodine solution. For the starch solution, 2 ml of starch solution I am adding 2 ml, uh, 2 drops of iodine. Here you can see an intense blue color formation. This shows this contains a polysaccharide starch. Glycogen forms red color with iodine solution. Benlix test is a test to identify reducing sugar. Here we have the monosaccharide solution, reducing sugar solution, glucose and non-reducing sugar solution, sucrose. So for the Benlix test, we need to add 3 ml of the Benlix reagent and 5 drops of the solution. 5 drops of glucose solution I am adding. And we have to keep in the boiling condition for 2 minutes. The same way, I am adding the 5 drops of the sucrose solution in the Bendix reagent. 
and we keep in the boiling condition for 2 minutes. Reducing sugars are positive for the test. The appearance of the brick red color precipitate indicates the presence of reducing sugar. So we can see the change in color. First it changed to green, yellow and finally brick red color precipitate. Whereas in the sucrose solution there will not be any color change. So we say reducing sugar reacts with the Bendix reagent to form the brick red color precipitate. Reducing sugar solution glucose reacts with the Benedict's reagent and form the brick red color precipitate whereas the non-reducing sugar sucrose is not changing to any other color. The Benedict's color is blue, it remains the same. It is negative for the test. Our first test is a test to distinguish between monosaccharides and disaccharide. Here we have the monosaccharide solutions glucose and fructose solution and disaccharide lactose and sucrose solution. For the Barford test we have to take 2 ml of the Barford's reagent I have taken already and 2 ml of the sugar solution that is the monosaccharide solution the fructose solution I have taken mix well so in the same way in another test tube we are taking the disaccharide lactose solution 2 ml and 2 ml of the Barford solution which is added already for boiling time is 2 minutes so this will keep in the boiling water bath. Presence of the red precipitate indicates the presence of monosaccharide. After getting the precipitate we have to cool in the running tap water. So it will not be so quantitative like how we get in the Bendix. The precipitate formation will be very scanty. So only after cooling under running tap water the precipitate, red precipitate will form nicely. After 2 minutes, we can see the red precipitate formation in the monosaccharide solution at the bottom of the test tube, whereas in disaccharide solution, no color change. The Barford's blue color solution remains the same. Selenox test is a test to distinguish between the aldose sugar and keto sugar. Here we have taken the glucose solution which is an aldose sugar solution and fructose which is keto sugar solution. To do the Selenox test, 1 ml of Selenox reagent is taken and 1 ml of the sugar solution is added. So in the same way, for fructose also, 1 ml of Selenox reagent and 1 ml of fructose solution is added and kept for 1 minute. The appearance of cherry red color indicates the presence of keto sugar. Selenox test is specific for keto sugar, so the fructose solution will give cherry red color in the positive uh, Selenox test. Here we see after a one minute of boiling, in the glucose solution there is no change in color, whereas in fructose solution, which is a keto sugar solution, there is 
cherry red color formation this is the positive color for selenoff's test Phenylerazine hydrochloride test or ozone test is a confirmatory test in sugar analysis. It is called phenylerazine uh, hydrochloride uh, test because it contains the chemical phenylerazine hydrochloride. It is called ozone test because the product formed is ozone. Here we have the one uh, sugar solution: glucose, um, fructose, maltose, and uh, lactose solution. Each one one ml of the solution in the phenylerazine hydrochloride test 1 ml of the sugar solution 1 ml of the phenylerazine hydrochloride reagent is added so we already taken 1 ml of the sugar solution to this 1 ml of the phenylerazine hydrochloride reagent and kept in the boiling condition in the same way 1 ml of the phenylerazine hydrochloride is added in fructose 1 ml of the phenylerazine hydrochloride reagent is added to the 1 ml of the maltose solution 1 ml of the phenylerazine hydrochloride is added to the 1 ml of the lactose solution different sugars form it's mixed well and kept in the boiling condition different sugars form different shape of the crystals at different time intervals here we have the ozone crystals formation for the various sugar solutions after the boiling for the particular timing which differ from sugar to sugar here we have the glucose zone fructose zone maltose zone and lactose zone glucose zone and fructose zone will form the same needle shaped crystals only the time variation fructose will form the ozone much earlier than the glucose fructose zone will be formed within 3 to 5 minutes glucose zone in 8 to 10 minutes maltose will form the crystals in 20 to 25 minutes and lactose in 45 minutes to 1 hour maltose zone forms sunflower shaped crystals lactose zone or tennis ball shaped crystals the crystals are viewed under the microscope